Hi folks. So I am just about to invite someone and let's see if we can go. Alright, so I've accepted your request. Yay! Okay. Finally. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's a shadow ban or what on my page, but for some reason I'm not able to let anyone on. It's very strange. <laughs> but I restarted my phone real quick, so we're here. Thank you so much for doing this, by the way. How are you doing this morning? I'm all right. Um, I'm, yeah? I'm never good with public speaking, even if it's like a live video, but I'm good. Don't lie. I've seen you do it before. You did it in your stories like a couple of days now. <laughs> yeah, You're doing but... fine. You know, the thing is, in my stories, I just kind of, you know, I'm in the comfort of my room and I kind of pretend no one's watching. <laughs> Trust me, I'm doing the same thing. Look, I'm in the comfort of my room and it's just us. <laughs> so no problem. So please, by all means, um, I wanted people to know who you are and what you stand for. I know you're a blogger and I know you are a very proud activist. You stand for a lot of very touchy issues, which I'm actually really glad because more people should be talking about this stuff. You're not supposed to be scared of who you are. You're not supposed to be scared to hide parts of yourself. You're supposed to be just who you are and happy to be who you are. So I'm really glad I came across your page. Would you mind telling us how you decided to speak up a little bit more? All right. Um, I actually have a, uh, qu my qualifications are in psychology and um, I think having struggled with body image, I really wanted to delve into uh, healing um, from the eating disorders that I struggle with as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, uh, I struggled with investing in diet culture and there just came a point where I was in my 30s and I decided, you know, this is just not doing anything for me. I, I don't, um, you know, I, I don't feel good. And um, I'm just going to embrace myself as I am. If, I'm, okay. if I look plus size and if this is, this is my set point for my weight, I'm okay with it. Okay. And that's how I just started. I, I just... Basically, I just thought, okay, I'm just going to try wearing a few nice plus size clothing. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be really sweet. And then I found myself really invested in the activism after seeing the amazing work that um, body positive and fat activists have been doing. Okay. All right. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of want to, because you mentioned that you have a background in psychology, and I'm not here to, you know, talk about your qualifications, but I know a lot of people always ask. Yeah. I have a background in psychology as well. You do. But honestly, I lived through a lot. So I think that qualifies me a little bit more, because what people don't understand is you can have the degree. Honestly, yeah. But if you don't understand the theories you taught. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so um, the yeah. fact that you went through it on your own, you deciphered it for yourself you tested the theories in your own life I think that's amazing and from what you've told me like the, the small piece that I understand it's almost like once you stopped fighting who you were things kind of changed for the better right basically okay very yeah. cool um if you wouldn't mind I know you've lived through a lot more than just uh you know uh food eating disorders how you feel about your body but Unfortunately, everyone goes through that. They don't have to be skinny or fat or any of those things. You always have this one moment where you're like, oh, I don't like the way I look because this is not the way I was taught that I need to look. The society kind of like helps pigeonhole you or train you into thinking a specific way. So how did you find like-minded people? Was it through social media? How did you, how did you find other people to, to kind of look up to and help basically, you get started? Basically through social media, um, Instagram. To be honest, um, I happened to create an account in 2011 and okay. I started following these plus size bloggers because okay. I, I wanted to find inspiration. And then in between um, looking for plus size fashion inspiration, I found these activists and okay. I began to educate myself and um, find healing in the process. Yes, 
Absolutely. There's always healing in the process. And I love the fact that you mentioned that because I feel like not many people understand it. They want the information and they think just having the information suddenly, right. okay, I'm done. I'm healed now. No, that's not how that works. You yeah. kind of got to walk through the mud a little bit. Exactly. Um, like, like you said, you know, um, despite our qualifications in psychology, I mean, it's because we live through the university of hard knocks that we yep. have um, learned what we have uh, to cope, whether good or bad. And uh, we're just navigating it right now with the tools that we are accessible to on social media, through so many other platforms. I love that. I love that. So as a blogger, when did you actually, I, I know you opened the account in 2011. When did you start blogging to write about all the things that you were seeing? Well, technically, I actually started blogging in 2009. Um, okay. It was, it was on a different blog and it was on a whole okay. multitude of different things. And it was only in 2011 that I decided, I think I'm just going to focus on this for okay. now. Because this is, this sits well with my heart. This is something that's mm -hmm. close to me. It's been kind of the core of my struggles. Yeah. And um, I want to see where I can take it from here. Absolutely. And a lot of the people that end up like talking to me, they will ask, like, I don't know what I need to be doing. When I say, you know, what is it that you're an expert in? Because there's a specific set of experiences that you've lived through that makes you an expert. No one else can say that they lived through it the way you did, that they came out the other side the way you did. So it's awesome. I'm really glad you've been you've been writing for a really long. That's 10 years now. That's 10 yeah. years. 10 years. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so when you decided to leave what you initially started doing behind and start focusing on body positivity, uh, all of your specific experiences, how did that, how would you guide it to that? Like, was it people asking questions? How, how did you come to that, uh, that I, direction? I, I definitely asked a lot of questions and I okay. was really lucky to have found um, advocates who would take the time to answer. Also literature that is, uh, okay. A certain amount of literature that's um, related to body positivity and it's been around for a while so I delved into that and I read um, the beauty myth and okay. um, a few other things um, and I also engaged with other bloggers who were on the same journey okay, and perfect. we kind of um, helped each other along the way and worked through our struggles together that's great. There's nothing better than support, especially when you're when you found like like minded people, right? So yes. may I ask, are those support people are they in Singapore? Or are they kind of like scattered air all over? Um, no, they're not in Singapore. I do have like um my girls who work at the Curve Cult. It's a plus size clothing store and mm -hmm. you must have seen their the Pavili collection right now. So they're yep. extremely body positive. But um, the bloggers that I worked with, no, they're all over the world, London, Spain, Perfect. everywhere. Yeah. That's awesome. So that means that you're kind of like our forerunner here in Singapore for us. That's awesome. How do you <laughs> feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little scary because I'm catching on in age and I'm kind of like, can I pass the baton? <laughs> If somebody will step up. But I mean, that also means that, you know, hopefully people will speak up and say, like, like reach out to you and, and ask more questions and kind of follow right. in your footsteps. But that's awesome that you, you kind of paved the way. That's not an easy thing, especially in Singapore. Let's talk about being Asian and all of this stuff and Ooh. speaking up at all about anything. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. you know, imagine like, like a friend told me once, because I was complaining about how I don't get opportunities here like regular bloggers do. Um, and she said, look, you're fat, you're brown, you're loud. Um, those are three major... Awesome combination. Those are major... But it's kind of hard to miss you then. It is. <laughs> I stick out. <laughs> That's a good thing. We need you to stick out. We need other people to feel like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. Exactly. But I know it's not hard. You're the first of your kind, and I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you. And I know you you kind of want to pass the baton, but don't do it just yet. We, we no, still no, need no, you. No, not just yet. <laughs> I still have more to go. 
So I've been noticing your posts recently in your stories, and you've been talking a lot about how people always have advice for you. And it's a very Indian thing to do. Like as soon as you go, especially right now, like holidays coming up, be probably around the corner, you know, the first thing everybody's <laughs> going to come to your house and be like, oh, you should do this and you should do that. And you can fix uh-huh. this. And can you keep your mouth to yourself? It would be really helpful. I love you, but yep. you know, stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we call it concern trolling. So um, they, they troll you and essentially it is trolling, but it is in the form of, but I'm worried about your health. I need it in the best way. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. I need it in the best way. I love you, but, and, <laughs> and you know, I've heard this from everyone, from my parents to, you know, um, my peers to teachers and all of that stuff growing up. That's just, it's been mm-hmm. never ending. <laughs> I've had random people send me messages. You know, you could do this and clear up your face if you just like take. Oh I'm like, oh my god, oh, thanks. Oh. And I keep telling them, you know, it's not topical. I need to fix my gut so that my face will reflect the the health. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. They just don't realize it. Like I recently, um, like about six months ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes type two, and then everyone went ding 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 ding. Oh my god, she's fat. Hence. She has diabetes. It must be that only reason. It must be that. And then... Because I, it's the most obvious, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. You think? Obviously. That's what Like Captain Obvious. Like. Let me point out what, I, what you already know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I remember looking at my doctor because he did an up and down and he went, you know, you got to lose weight, right? And I went, oh, well, hello, Captain Obvious. Thank you. Tell me something Lighten I don't me. know. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> So that is a different mindset altogether to deal with that constantly mm. when it's very obvious like that for mm. people to just randomly offer advice because they feel it is their duty to do so, especially in our families, especially around the holidays. How do you stay positive? Ooh, uh, with a lot of meditation and vodka. No, uh, with a lot of... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Mine's tequila. I can't do vodka anymore. I think I overdid it one time and I just... No, oh, I can't do I'm it anymore. A, I'm a gin and tonic girl, but yeah. Mm, um, okay. <laughs> meditation is one thing, but I, I kind of have to pull back into the resources that I have created. And okay. um, I kind of um, reach into myself and I tell myself that, you know, I have grown and gone to a place that they might never get to. Mm-hmm. And um, I, maybe a few years ago, I would have wanted to just lash out and get really angry yep. and cause a scene and scream at everyone. Pass it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it basically. But, you know, that, that, that they're not going to learn anything. So yeah. what I usually do is I kind of make them think I say hey I don't know if you know this and I know we've known each other for a long time but I actually have a history of eating disorders and um, you might think eating disorders are specifically for people who look anorexic but they're not and I've struggled with this all my life and then I just kind of recount little incidents and they kind of recoil and like Oh, I did not know. Okay, it's deeper than just the fat. Great. Yes. Good. I'm glad though. Because that's what we need to do. People don't, people see what they see. Mm -hmm. They want to understand just on the surface, but they don't realize there's so many other things that are going on. Uh, For me, I teach a lot about your feelings. You got to, you got to listen to your feelings because they're telling you something's wrong. Something's off. Maybe something really feels good. Chase that some more, you know, but when it comes to eating disorders, and I don't know about you, when I'm stressed, I don't feel I deserve food, so I stop eating. Ah, I've been there. So mine goes the other direction sometimes. Um, but when I'm happy, even then, because because I've lived through a lot of situations where we didn't always have the money, I always make sure that everyone around me has enough, and then I eat. Then I'm, I feel okay to eat. But that's that's my my mindset when it comes to food and having enough when it comes to money as well. So it's a it's a it's almost like a root cause for right. the way my relationship with food. So your relationship with food, I don't know if it changed throughout your life or it started when we kind of just manifested the same way, but in different avenues. But Uh, please, by all means, let us know. It's really nuanced. Um, I was actually extremely skinny as a child. Um, My parents were worried because I was a fussy eater. I did not like to eat. And so the, I think about, I was about six or seven and the doctors decided to put me on appetite um, inducers. And okay. 
what happened was um, my parents didn't have the know-how of of teaching me, you know, of how food can be nourishing and all of this stuff and teaching me the good and the bad. And um, they just allowed me to just do whatever I wanted. And then I arrived at a body weight, which was, you know, double, triple my uh, former size. And instead of addressing that with love, uh, mm. I started getting shamed. And then puberty struck and the cycle of um, starvation and binging and purging, it just kept oh, going. No. Wow. Yeah, all okay. the way until the year of my wedding oh so how did yeah. you would you say you found a way to regulate it now like because you've self oh, self-taught sure. yourself yeah for sure i think i do still um have body dysmorphia and i do still um struggle with what I see in a mirror, but a lot less. And okay. um, just the constant, the constant reminders and um, the resources that I have remind me that, you know, the mirror tells lies. And um, yeah, I constantly tell myself that, you know, um, and uh, yeah, and my, my, I, my validation should not come from these things that everybody p takes pride in, you know. Yeah. Be beauty is not what I was born for. It was not what I aspire to. And um, I've got just so much more to do than worry about my body. I get it. I really get it. But I'm really glad that you also told me that, you know, you, you mentioned very quickly, and I think people really need to really understand this, your parents did not know any better. They were not educated. The doctor did not educate them on what could or could not happen or what you should be worried about when they gave you the appetite enhancers. And then when everything changed, because they didn't know how to handle it, they, they did what they know. They yeah. shame because that is what we were raised with, shame. Oh, yeah. So that is how we, <laughs> unfortunately. So I'm really glad you're out here breaking the cycle. I don't know if you teach at the moment outside of your blog. Like, do you hold workshops? Do you help people in that I regard? Mean, is that something you would ever want to do? That is absolutely something I want to do. I mean, that is where I see myself um, in the near future expanding upon this because social media is good and it's got its reach, but um, there's nothing like, you know, doing it within the communities that you live in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's something I'm trying to break into as well. Um, yeah. For those of you who don't know, I was overseas for 30 years. So I am a local foreigner. I was oh, born okay. here, but okay. I left when I was five. And I'm, I'm finally back and I'm raising my kid. But um, being gone for so long means I'm really out of touch with the community. I'm out of touch okay. with the slang. I'm out of touch with the, the way things are here. So I stick out that way as well, not just right. the accent. Right. Um, but that's something I want. Because even though my social media reaches mostly United States, you know, um, Europe, UK, I have all my family here. I have a lot of people here that I can really help. And when you talk about, you know, a lot more happens when you get involved in the community. Absolutely. I truly believe it takes a village. And if we can start in our communities, we can really kind of spread the change a little bit more, like wildfire a little bit. Because, yeah, of course, we're going to stick out at first and it won't be nice. But once they understand we're not coming at it from a place where we're telling you all off, we're telling you there's a better way we could do this. Yeah, we where come everyone can win. Love. Mm -hmm. Because it took us a long time to love ourselves, and if we can love ourselves, hey, we can I love know. everybody. Exactly. And um, I mean, I lived abroad for a, a way shorter period of time, but I I don't think I ever really identified here because of how I look like and okay. um probably because of my personality i've always been eccentric and so i've always considered myself like someone who lives on the fringe of society and, and i think that's a good thing actually you don't yeah. go with the crowd you kind of stand yeah. and watch as the crowd goes by that's good basically you know always been a bystander and um uh never really felt um embraced or accepted uh I think one of my core hurts is, you know, finding a sense of belonging. And mm -hmm. that's just an ongoing thing. I think so. I think so. I mean, the person you were when you were little 
and the person you were after, you know, you had trouble with food when you realized that, you know, it was kind of out of control and you didn't understand why until yeah. the person that you finally understand why and you know what you need to do. All of those people are different people. So obviously the tribe that you started off with is not going to be the tribe you're with right now. Yeah. And for you to get involved in the community, I think you get to kind of build it for yourself and for yeah. other people that are looking for that support because God knows Asia needs some help. Ooh, yeah. And I know, love Asia. <laughs> I, I love my heritage and my cultures, but it's problematic. You know, that uh, every culture is problematic and we've got, you know, our whole host of stuff. And um, yeah, that's how it is. I think it's really interesting. Uh, there was a, po uh, a post of yours that I engaged on. I think it was like, the first time I really actually spoke to you. Uh -huh. And you were saying something about, you know, how the West uh, is blamed for influencing us. But when it suits them, the West is a good thing. And I feel mm -hmm. like people like you and I, who actually really see the world for what it is, mm -hmm. we can take the good with the bad. We can find a way to make sure that the influence of the West <laughs> is taken so that it actually benefits the community here it helps us grow and evolve instead of, instead of saying stuck in oh it's been like this for years it's got to be like this forever and no that's not the way that needs to be so i think that's that's really important um the fact that you say both of us have lived overseas and come back we don't really fit in i think that's important to to bring back whatever we see that's good what do you feel about that absolutely um i lived in australia and um i think it was very freeing um i know that um, any country has their whole host of um, body positive issues and fat phobia. Sure. But as an Indian um, living in a foreign nation, I never once felt shame for myself. Good. And um, it was it was eye opening and it was liberating. And when I came back and the onslaught of the shaming began, it just it just felt like it's a very marked difference, right? So different, and it just you know, it just occurred to me, you know, this, this has got to change. Yeah. Something has got to say something. It's almost as if in other countries, they don't feel the need to come and tell you about yourself. <laughs> they kind of keep themselves and they, you know, they're, they're civil and they're polite and that's good enough. But here, for some reason, everyone has their own opinion of how you should be living your life. And I get that a lot. Like, um, single mom, right? The first thing happened is the auntie network activated and they needed to find me a suitor. They needed to marry me off because I should not be alone. And I'm like, why? <laughs> there is a serious lack of personal space. And it's just that they don't understand. They don't know how they would have done it themselves. So for me to do it, you know, very differently from the way they're doing it kind of like upsets the balance of things, which yeah. I like. I don't know if you feel that way as well. Me I like too. upsetting Me the balance too. of things. It means that people question it. things a little bit. <laughs> exactly. So outside of your body dysmorphia, the things that you've had to deal with as far as mindset, there have been other situations that you've had to really dig through and survive and then find a way to thrive. You mentioned that recently. You... Um, you actually brought me up. I did not know. For me, October has always been about breast cancer awareness. Yeah. I did not know it was about pregnancy and child loss awareness as well. And that was a big thing. That was, that was huge. I did not know. I wasn't aware of it until about two or three years ago. And, okay. and I was, um, it's weird to say pleased, but um, it was nice to find a um, community of people who could relate and um, okay. shared their stories openly because such a taboo to talk about in the Asian culture. And mm -hmm. all, all I'm told is you can try again, you can keep trying. And, um, you know, there comes a certain point in my life where I'm just like, you know, well, it's not your decision to make. Exactly. And I think people forget that there is like an, an onslaught of emotions that comes with so loss of a child, the constant trying. It's almost like your kind of your life kind of revolves around that all of a sudden. It's not like nothing else exists. So I can only imagine what you went through. Yeah. And I wish people understood. And it, I know it's very painful to talk about, but I need people to realize that there are so many things that happen in life that we're not allowed to speak on, which I wish there was a platform for. So I I thank you. I applaud you for being so open. I know it was difficult for you to go in your stories that day and, and share all that, but I listened to every piece of that because, first of all, it was nice to hear that someone was open enough to share that. 
And second of all, I think more people need to realize that it's not as few and far between as it used to be once upon a time. It happens yeah. more often than we'd like to admit. Yeah. And if we knew that maybe we as women could come together, maybe we could help our men understand what it all, like they kind of stay on the outside, right? They don't really get to right. experience those emotions. Right. They can hold your hand and pat your back, but they have no idea what's mm -hmm. going on in your head. They don't see every commercial that comes on that's like a diaper commercial. Like all of a sudden you have buses that go by that's talking about, you know, the birth rate in Singapore, please increase the birth rate in Singapore. <laughs> like they don't, they don't get it the way we do. And I wish there was a way to help them understand, let them know there is a space for them too, because we do need you guys. Yeah. Um, and then we need to be able to talk about it to each other as well. Yeah. And, you know, statistics, statistics show that one in four women will suffer a miscarriage. And that's yeah. quite, quite a bit of a statistic. Um, and I, I wish more women knew about it so that it wouldn't be so much of a stigma to talk about. I, I, I said this before, I said this last week, and I said we need to do away with the notion of taboos and stigmas in the world that we live in right now because we're, Absolutely. Just, we're just limiting ourselves from um, the freedom to you know, express ourselves and live our true lives. You said something big there, when you <laughs> limit yourself. Absolutely. Because if I'm not allowed to talk about it, that means I can't heal that. Exactly. That means I'm going to sit here with this, this lump in my throat for the rest of my life, and it depends on how many more lumps I accumulate. But I can't talk about it, which means I can't ask to anyone else if they've been through it. I can't, yeah. you know, uh, check with you if this particular symptom is normal or not. Like I have to be afraid exactly. for the rest of my life. And I, I don't like that. Yeah, neither do I. And that's why I really love the work that you do and how open you, you are. And, um, you know, every time I watch your videos, it's just such a breath of fresh air to see someone so candid about things because we and that's where the school of hard knocks is so important right i mean right. i can tell you i have a psych degree i have a master i have a bachelor's in psychology i have a master's in education i have human resource professional management certifications but none of that comes even close to the things i've lived through yeah because even though i have those certifications i couldn't sit here and write a blog post and tell you hey I went through these emotions and I bet you're going through them too. I understood that this was happening, but I didn't realize there was more to it because I had to live through it. Um, and there's so much, I'm, look, you guys, I'm not knocking counseling. Please go talk to somebody. Yeah. But I'm also saying that sometimes the counselor doesn't connect with you very well. Sometimes yeah. you need someone else. You need an added avenue to kind of express yourself. So if I'm not going to be honest about me, you're never going to trust me. And if you don't know what I've been through, you don't know how I could possibly relate or what you can ask me about. So that's why I decided to kind of just come out about it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. And you know what? Okay, so I have a bachelor's and honors and a master's related to counseling and psychology. And um, it's kind of an occupational hazard to find a therapist for me because I'm always busy kind of... You know a lot? <laughs> I'm always kind of busy undermining my, my therapist going, oh, you're doing, <laughs> you're doing cognitive behavioral therapy and you're reinforcing this and you're going to give me... You're recognizing? Work. Yeah. But I'm do you see that? They have a pattern they have to follow. It's, yes. I love Singapore. I love Singapore. But you have a lot of robots walking around that don't know what to do if oh. you don't follow the plan. Yes. And counseling has to be open. Counseling yeah. has to be open. Yeah. Because my symptoms will not match up with all of the, the symptoms that you're used to. Yeah. And I may express it differently than your – the keywords may be different. My yeah. language will be different. Exactly. And if you're not able to connect with me as a human, right. this is not going to work. I can't right. tell you how many therapists I've been to in how many different countries – and they all tell me, oh, you're really self-aware. You don't need therapy. Yeah. Huh? I get <laughs> but it still hurts. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, uh, you have no idea what I've been through. Hello. Why do you think I've come to you? <laughs> I came home and um, I sat down with a family member who was a therapist. Mm -hmm. And we went to like maybe, I did like maybe three sessions with him. He's like, no, you're good. I think you're really well adjusted. I'm thinking, I, I, I left my husband on the other side of the world and came home with a toddler. Uh, <laughs> help. What are you talking about? <laughs>
this is why I'm so glad. And I can't wait for you to start doing community work workshops because I think there are a lot more people than you know, because I've had people ask me and I'm like, yo, you need to go talk to her. So um, I'm sending people your way, just so you know. Thank um, you. And I you send know. people your way. Thank you. Thank you. But I think that what you're doing is so great. The more you become more open about what you've done. First of all, I am blown away by how brave you are to post pictures because you're comfortable, because you're happy. Look, I don't know if I could do that, believe it or not, because I have my own like set of yes. shit that I'm dealing with, which is stupid. But yeah, you I know, will get there one day. And and I get that a lot. I get I get that um you know a lot of people will say that I'm brave and I'm courageous and I'm a badass but um I'll There's no but that. you are. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately I think it's it's kind of this um decision to do away with um being so shackled. Yeah. And um um reminding myself that i deserve to take up space i deserve to be in that public swimming pool with my bikini with my body um as much as any other woman absolutely yeah absolutely and keep doing it and if someone cuz i'm else, coming <laughs> and if someone else can see that and think oh my god my body looks just like that i think i'm going to try wearing a bikini because she looks so happy I would have and that's what I want. That's what I want. I want people yeah. to be more happy. The exactly. fact that you own all of you, that's yeah. freaking amazing. Can we all yeah. do that, please? Because there's yes. so many of us that skeletons in our closet. We don't want to talk about certain things because they're taboo to us because it will trigger us and we'll go off on a rampage. Yeah. But that's the stuff we need to be talking about. I saw a quote today that said, you know, I don't like that person over there. I probably should go get to know them. And I I believe that. I really do because if there's something I automatically judge and say I don't like that person, it means that something within myself yes. has taught me that this is all there is it yes. can only be this way and it's not like that at all yeah i am in awe of you Dad. i don't know how you got to where you are living here in singapore first of all it's okay because... that is a big deal <laughs> and the fact that you own all of you you're able to talk about it even though it tears you up and it chokes you up a little bit i don't care the point is it hurt and it still hurts it will always hurt a little bit but talking about it helps as well and i don't think people understand for me to coach and help you and see you get better helps me too it yeah, heals exactly. me a little bit too exactly and that's what i want more of this i want more talk therapy i want more people to talk about what's going on i'm not talking about sitting and complaining by the way yes. i'm talking about open up yes. air out yes. that stuff that's just been festering for a while exactly. let us in so we can help you yes. um You also talk about uh LGBTQ rights right. and that's something I'm passionate about too. As a straight woman, I could care less, but I'm a mom and I want to make sure that our generation coming up does not have to worry about who will accept them and who won't. I know there are MPs out there that are doing polls on who will accept, you know, LGBTQ influence. That's cool and everything, but why don't you talk about don't don't break it down by age. Why don't you talk about who is resistant to change and who's not? Yeah. because the people who are not resistant to change could care less who the influence is. Yeah. They'll take the good with the bad. They'll figure out what they need to apply and leave the rest. Exactly. Exactly. Because if you do it that way, the people who like change and the people who will not take change, yeah. then you can break it down by how many of the race and the language and the age demographics fall into both categories. You can't differentiate. It's right. just the way you're raised. It's what you believe. Right. We have to have room for us to to change our beliefs and your your you're questioning it you're showing people that it's okay to question it and there's a healthy way to question it and that you can find a way for you to fit in no matter where you are yeah and that's what's so amazing about you and the work you do well thank you um you know you know my bisexuality has come into question a lot um okay as someone who has not come out to her parents and i said it before and i will never come out to my parents because that's just how it is um okay. people not being able to identify me as bisexual because i am married to a heterosexual man um mm-hmm. makes it really difficult and um through my advocacy for all of the different topics um that i mm-hmm. do um uh, i've actually lost quite a few friends and like circles of friends and I can only imagine and you know 
it's been isolating and to kind of like you know be sitting there in this corner and banging on your drum and saying please believe me and listen to what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um so i'm i'm really glad that there are so much that there's so much more discussion around this yes but yes. there should be the right kind of discourse like you said mm-hmm. you know um i i have a lot of faith in um our young ones um i feel like they um experience so much more than we have and um <clears throat> you know they are breaking barriers as they go along and I look forward to see what they're doing and I look forward to working with them and also to educate the people who are of my age and older who you know maybe are like, terrified terrified to death terrified to death but hopefully you know uh it they might come they might see the light someday They will. We keep talking up the way we are. There's only two ways this can go. You either shut me up or you actually hear me. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you want people to know about you as far as the work you do? We've covered like a very broad range of topics here. Being brown and Asian, being in Singapore, the way we were raised, the schooling that we've been through, um body dysmorphia, eating, you know, your relationship with food because Singapore is the place to eat. Hello. <laughs> um what else? Uh LGBTQ rights. Uh yeah. just speaking up in general because it's not the norm. Yeah. Is there anything else that you you want people to know about you? I think I like to address um this thing that people always like to say about glorifying obesity. Um Okay. And everyone making BMI the benchmark for whether you're healthy or not. The ben- the, the BMI is so rigged. It is um, only an indicator of your health. It is not going to tell you that your health is a plus and yep. um if i do glorify anything i glorify the right for anyone to be who they want to be and live their lives and take up space and that's why i'm here absolutely i mean looking at people you can't tell obviously there are some smokers that show symptoms of you know throat lung stuff Yeah. But then there are some smokers who look perfectly fine. There are perfectly normal healthy women that look fit that have fibroids and suffer. Exactly. You know, there are so many things you can't see from the surface that we need to I I get what you're saying. You're not glorifying it, but you are letting people know that it's okay to be where you're at. If yeah. you're working towards something better, great. If it's yeah, mind exactly. or body or spirit, whatever. Exactly. But it's okay where you are right now. Yeah. I love it. I really love it. So, for people out there who don't already know you, are you primarily uh more active on Facebook or Instagram? I think it's Instagram, right? Are you active Instagram on Facebook right as well? Now. Yeah, Instagram. Okay. And then your blog, it's in your it's in your bio, correct? It is. Um okay. I've had a very long spell of imposter syndrome and um not writing, and I hope to break it really soon and get started on writing because That's what got me started and that's what I love the most. Okay. So I And honestly, um it's easy to find people, you know, when they they're searching for specific topics when you've got so much written. So I can only imagine how many posts you already have up there, but the point is people, if you don't already know, go check her out, go ask questions. Um, yes, please interact with her because you've been so humble. You've been very very sweet. Um and I really enjoy speaking to you. Check out her blog, check out her um her Instagram page. If you have any questions, please directly message her because she will do her best to answer because that's what we're here for. We're here to support the community to let people know that they're you're allowed to think differently if you'd like. Yep. Um and as long as it's all in the spirit of love, we're all good with you. There's no problem. Exactly. And thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. This has been fun. So, I'm uh I'm actually going to remind people her account name is Curves Become Her. C U R V E S B E C O M E H E R. Please go follow this young lady Arpi and support her and ask questions if you need to and I look forward to your first workshop. 
And I'd really like you to uh, give a short uh, bio about yourself too, because this is on my life. So my folks must be very curious as to who you sure. are. Sure. <laughs> uh, my name is Rasati. Uh, I was born here in Singapore, but like I said, I've lived all over for about 30 years and then I finally came back home. So I lived in London, in Australia, in Indonesia, and then in the States. I was in the States for about 20 years. Mm. Um, I am a single mom. My daughter is now eight. We've been here about six years. And honestly, I love talking about feelings. I love talking about feelings. And she's and good I at really it. Have... <laughs> Thank you. Um, I really feel like, and this is going to sound weird, but I really believe that feelings are the way your soul tells you what's going on, if, if something is right or wrong for you. And if you get angry, you need to sit with that and figure out where it's coming from. If you get jealous, you need to sit with that and figure out where that's coming from. It doesn't mean that you're right or wrong. It just means that something is off in your world. You kind of need to figure out what it is so you can fix it. Because I believe that it's not just the sadhus and all the samis out there that are, you know, eligible to have this great life where they're happy all the time. I think we can do it too. Yeah. We just got to cut through all the noise and figure out what's best for us. So when you're talking about, you know, you figured out which diet was best for you, you probably had to take, you probably had to energy test a lot of food. Some foods agree with you, some foods don't. And that's not going to fit into any one diet. It's just your diet. Yeah. Same thing with people. Yeah. Some people are going to be great for you. Some people not so much. But it's all about being a little bit more aware. So if you can listen to your feelings, if you can see when it happens, then you can actually dig and see where it's coming from and we can create a better life going forward. So I love feelings, you guys. So you want to talk about feelings? Come talk to me. <laughs> She's amazing. So please give Rasati a follow and um, check out her post because she has such an amazing array of it. And she's multi-talented. I try. We shall see. <laughs> um, and this is the thing. Um, I figure I'm going to die at some point, right? But I'm going to die young as late as possible, which means I got to stay active. I can't sit around and be like, okay, this is it. I'm done now. Nope. I'm going to yeah, keep yeah. active because I have a little one I got to keep up with as well. So we're going to try everything. There's a big bucket list. We got to do everything. We'll yeah, try it. exactly. Exactly. You only live once. Man, there is no dress rehearsal. Just get it done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you. Thank you so much. Love we will you. keep in touch on the back end. But yes. in the meantime, if you ever need, uh, if you ever want to co collaborate, if you ever need anything from me, please, by all means. And um, the curves become her. And they become her because she's accepted them. So please, yes, yeah. go talk to Arti. Get to know her a little bit more. And uh, we'll see you again real soon. All right. Bye. Bye.